If you're like me and you struggle with organizing your Figma design files for your product design team, then look no further. I found the best Figma organization tool that is just for you, for the designer. Now this tool is called Zeppelin and it's perfect for handoffs for devs and for your entire team in general, right? If you have people that need to have access to design assets or the style guide or design systems of your project and you don't want them in Figma or messing around in, in those layers, then this is absolutely perfect for you. And let me show you a little bit about how it actually works. Now. As I said, this is Zeppelin and it does exactly what it says here on the H1. It delivers on the promise of design, right? It makes it super easy to hand off design projects to teams that don't really need to be involved in Figma and they don't really need to learn how to manage a Figma asset system or how to manage the Figma file system, right? It can get a bit confusing for everyone. And so this product does exactly that. It helps you organize those design systems so that everyone else in your team can have access to it and have it be really easy to manage. Zeppelin has plugins for for Figma, for Adobe XD, and also for Sketch. But as you guys know me, I only use Figma for my design systems and for my designing. So today I'm gonna to show you guys how to access the plugin, how to export the designs from Figma to actually into Zeppelin, and a tour of Zeppelin and how you guys can actually use it to your benefit. Now, after we sign up, and if we go into go to projects, we'll be greeted with the actual dashboard of Zeppelin. And so to give you an idea of how Zeppelin works and how the organization is used in Zeppelin, think about it with different tabs, right? So we've got projects, you've got sections, and then you've got pages, right? You can organize your projects with different client names or with different sections of the website, maybe if you wanted to, but it's basically to organize between different clients, between different projects in general, right? If you're working on one client and then another, you wouldn't really want to mess those up. Then you've got sections. Imagine the sections being the different dimensions for your projects. So imagine it being the web, the iOS, and then the Android designs, right? You wouldn't want to get those mixed up as well. And then within those, we actually have the pages. And then within the pages, we can also organize within flows, right? So if you've got the onboarding flow, if you've got the contact details, right? Whatever it is, the different flows of a website or of an iOS project, then we can definitely organize those as well. So this is the website for Zeppelin. They've got a web app and they also have an actual desktop app. Now I'm gonna be using the desktop app because it's easier to organize and to use the files in the actual desktop app. So this is exactly what I was telling you guys about. Within this project panel, right? We've got Acme and this could be our client name or our project, right? So we've got these two different screens here. We've got web and iOS. So let's go into web and I'll show you guys a little bit about how it works. So as I said, we've got these different workflows and we've got all these different pages, right? Now imagine that we are actually in the Figma file and here I've got my Figma file. I've got all the pages that I'd be designing with, right? And this is kind of a mess, right? We wouldn't want to showcase this to anyone else in the team, to the founder, to any project managers, right? This is a mess. So the beauty of Zeppelin is that we've got these individual flows that we can organize with and here are two examples, right? But you can use this for the entire project or all the pages that you would have normally in a project. So once you have these sections or once you've uploaded a few different pages, there's a couple of benefits into using Zeppelin. So this is the sign in page of this project, right? This Acme Corp project. And you'll see that there's a couple things going on on this dashboard or on the screen right now. For one, if we start on the left, we've got this hourglass here, which allows us to see the different versions of the page, right? If you've got many different versions, then this is perfect to tell your team that this is the final version and there's no more V1, V2, V3. This is the only version that you need to look at and here it is in, in black and white, right? It's right in front of you. There's no need to go looking for anything else. Over here on the right side, we've got this note section where we can literally add notes to anything and say, change this up. We can add different colors to it to make sure that people know that it's us or if we have different meanings for different colors like this is going to be for this person or for that person well then you can do that and then on the right side here we've got this monkey icon which allows us to either hide the notes or see the notes and we can see that we have this other option here which allows us to see the mentioned notes or other resolved notes so if we hide that for a second we can see that we can also hover over each element just like we would in figma and then if we click on it we can see that it allows us to see the different margins and paddings between the components and the other parts of of the page. So here we can see the pixels between the button itself and then the left side of the screen or even the button and the actual text box inside the button. So if I click ESC right now and we take a look at the right side of the of the panel here, we'll see that we can add a description. So just a general description of the of the design, right? So maybe we say sign in 
ready for launch or something. Then we can just click done. And now that's ready for whoever wants to see it. And then on the right side over here, we also got this paintbrush icon, which allows us to see all the different colors within this page, which will be important for later. And then we have all the different sections over here. We've got the hex code. We've got the name of the actual of the actual color, which we can then also change if we wanted to. But again, this is just dependent on whatever you added in Figma, right? This will be dependent on whatever you named it in the first place. And then on the right side here, we've got all the assets that we can download. And then we can either download it for PNG, SVG. We've got all these different options here. We've got bitmap scales. We've got naming conventions. So if you wanted to name it in, on a certain way, right? Like camel case, snake case, kebab case, all these different very well-known cases. Well, then we can obviously do that. And then on the other side here, we've got the notes, which we can then see them all at once, right? We don't need to go around clicking the different parts of the, of the page and see who wrote what. We can just see them all at once. Now, if we go back to the dashboard here, one thing that's important to remember is that these screens are uneditable when people access them through Zeppelin, right? If I was to go into the sign in here and I saw that there was this weird gray little rectangle here and I wanted to delete it, I can't, right? I'm pressing the delete button and there's nothing I can do about it. I need to go into Figma itself and ask the designer or ask me or whoever it is to actually delete that little rectangle. And that's beautiful because if people don't actually know what they're doing and they think that this design can be improved and I'm just gonna delete this, I'm gonna delete that, well then we're not gonna we're not gonna go anywhere here, right? And so that's something really powerful in Zeppelin and something to keep in mind when you're designing for other people as well. Now, another really important thing to keep in mind in, for Zeppelin in general is that this is for teams, right? This is for teams of designers and developers and whoever needs to be involved this is for everyone so it's super important that you can add links when needed right if you have a jira board you have a trello board if you have a github page if you have a notion page you can add them all as as links and they're pretty much just like in your chrome browser you have bookmarks well it's pretty much the same thing you've got all these bookmarks that you have to keep in mind when you're using with other people so if i was just to add a notion board i would add notion here and then just paste in the url and then if i wanted to access it all i have to do is just click on it and it would open the notion and then this is available for everyone right another great thing about zeppelin is the ability to use colored tags, right? So when you're designing, there's always gonna be a part where you're researching, a part where you're still doing the basic designs, the first drafts, and then there's a part where you're gonna be ready for release, ready to ship, right? And sometimes that can get confusing to the developer, right? He's gonna ask, is this ready for research? Is this ready for shipment, right? Like what's where here and, and can I start developing? And a really easy way to organize this is by using these tags. You see that if I click on this tag here, you'll see that all the different available sections, right? We've got discovery, design, development, release, or no state. Status. And then we can also organize this through the different tabs. So we've got discovery, design, release, no status. So if I wanted to only see what's ready for release, then I can go ahead and click that. And now as a developer, I know that this is ready to go and I don't have anything to worry about. Now, another really powerful thing in Zeppelin is the ability to use variants. Just like you would in Figma, you have different variations of one thing. Well, then you can do the exact same thing with pages or also with components. So if you go over here and we see that there's this blue icon here, we double click on the page itself and you'll see that we've got this tab over here. Now this tab tells us that this is a variant and I created this tab just to show you guys how it would be used. Now in a nutshell, it groups it together and it makes it really easy for you to understand what's different about it, right? Maybe if you have a day mode and then a night mode, well then you can easily see the differences. And if we just go over here and click on the actual tab, well then you'll see that the difference here is that one is selected and one is not. And that's super beneficial to you because then you won't need to have a thousand screens if you have a lot of variations. You can just group them into one folder and you can access all the variations through that one section or to that one folder. Now you can do the same thing here with these pages. If I want to just drag them into here, it creates a new variant. And now if I double click onto this page, we'll be able to see all the different versions of this one screen. So we've got the default, we've got the edit, and then we've got the loading. So you'll see that this just changes and that's the only difference between those two. Now, if we wanted to export this to the actual Zeppelin app and we actually wanted to use this plugin, then this is exactly how we would do that. We would go into our Figma file here and select whatever screen or screens we wanted. We go ahead and click sign in or sign up. We go into the plugins, click Zeppelin. And once this tab shows up, all you want to do is click export and it's pretty much done. It's ready for you to access in Zeppelin and for your team to now see that it's the final version. Now, if I wanted to see those screens, all I have to do is click on this icon here and click either open in web or open in app. And then it'll take me directly to that section or to that page. Now, another thing that you can do in Zeppelin that's really beneficial is also export all the components. So if you have a lot of components like the mobile bar on the bottom, then you can go ahead and export those as components in the iOS version of this project, just like we have here. So if you go ahead into the Acme iOS, we'll see that in the style guide, we can then also access the components, right? And now we have all the components here, which we can then use multiple times over and over for our design systems or for devs whenever they need it, right? Another really great thing about Zeppelin here is that it allows you to have all the color palettes, all the textiles, the catalogs, 
and also all the spacings and layouts in one place, right? So this is really beneficial for your developers. So if we click on a color palette here, we'll see that we have all these colors. And if you guys remember earlier in the video, I told you guys that these colors come from the actual design that you created, right? It comes from the actual names of the colors that you created in Figma. And so once we have it here in Zeppelin, we can then access the names, we can access the hex code, the RGBs, and then also all of these Swift for your developers. So we've got all this here. If I want to change this and explore some extensions to GitHub, then I definitely can do that as well. Also, we've got all these preferences for developers, which is really great. We've also got the same thing for the textiles. So if I want to check out all the H3s, the H2s, and see what they actually are as a dev, then we can definitely do that as well. Now, I've been using Zeppelin for a really long time now with all my teams, all my projects, and I can assure you guys it's one of the best organization plugins that you guys could ever use. So if you guys want to go ahead and try it, then make sure that you use the link in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys on the next one.